Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you and also with you let us pray almighty god you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen reading from 1st Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks demand desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John glory to you Lord Christ the Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem in the temple he found people selling cattle sheep and doves and the money changers seated at their tables making a whip of cords he drove all of them out of the temple both the sheep and the cattle he also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Recently, 
I saw a very powerful photograph that basically screamed to be understood. And it was of two children. One was about three years old, a little girl. She was pretty and perfect in the way that only a little child can be. And standing next to her with, her, with his left arm protectively around her shoulder was her big brother, maybe six years old. But when you looked at his face, it wasn't quite so pretty. He had bruises prominent on that face. His left eye was swollen shut and you could see two fiery places red on his cheek where it was clear lacerations had been medically closed. Well, the story behind the photo was this. Apparently they were out in their yard playing and a neighbor's dog who was known to be aggressive got out of the enclosure. And as predators and bullies both are wont to do, it sought out the weakest possible prey and went right to the little girl without hesitation, her big brother, only six years old, jumped in front of the dog and he fought him off, enduring the snapping, snarling jaws and the scratching claws long enough until adults could intervene. It was a very touching story of innocence and a brother's love. It was a story of predation and protection. Predation and protection. Now, I mention this because I thought of that picture when I saw today's gospel, when I read today's gospel. For it, too, is a story of predation and protection. And I understand this gospel. What you have to do is understand what life was like for a Jewish person in first century Palestine. First off, it meant that you were probably exceptionally poor, basically a peasant. Secondly, it meant that following the law of Moses, there were occasions in your life where you had to offer to God an animal sacrifice. Now, this idea, of course, is offensive to most modern people. The idea of sacrificing an animal was the way it was. And it sounds simple enough on its face, doesn't it? You sacrifice an animal. But think of the logistics involved. Imagine, for instance, that the occasion called for you to offer a lamb. Now imagine you live 50 miles away from Jerusalem, and this is important because the sacrifices were made at the temple, which was in Jerusalem. And the question is, how are you gonna do this? Well, you're probably gonna to walk to Jerusalem, and how are you gonna get the lamb? I mean, you're gonna put it on a leash and try to walk it? You're gonna carry it? You have to protect it, and feed it, and care for it the whole way? But not to worry, because your friends at the temple and several merchants in the area have worked out an arrangement for your convenience. And what they've done is they've set up a marketplace in the outer courtyard of the temple. And there certain merchants have for sale the very animals that you need to offer. So why go to Jerusalem encumbered with an animal when you can just go and buy one there? Easy peasy. So the man, in our example here, goes to Jerusalem. And he goes to the first vendor after he gets in that outer courtyard. And he tells him he needs a lamb. And he can't believe it. The price is ridiculously high. So he says, no thanks. And he goes to the second vendor. And he hears the same crazy price. And by the time he gets to the third out of four vendors, he finds the same price. And this guy may be a bit of a rube, but he wasn't born yesterday. He starts to understand what's going on. That this house, which is supposed to be a house of prayer, now becoming at least partly a marketplace, has these vendors and they didn't get there by accident. They had to bid for these places. They had to pay the leaders of the temple, including the chief priest. And now they have to recoup their investment how much it costs for them to be in that marketplace. What's more, because they're the only sellers in a move straight out of the book of Corleone, they are fixing the price, charging crazy prices. Because what are you gonna do? You gonna walk three days back to your village and get your own lamb? Of course not. It's an offer you can't refuse. So the man decides he's going to pay the money for the land because what choice does he have? 
And he pulls out his money, and the vendor says, whoa, 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 what are you doing there? He said, well, I'm paying you. He said, but with what kind of money? And you look at it, and you realize you're at one end of the Roman Empire using Roman money. And he says, did you forget about the commandment? No graven images? You can't use that money here. But our friends over there, the money changers, will exchange that money quick as you please. Dirty Roman money with graven images for nice, clean, image-free shekels, appropriate for use, simple as can be, bada boom, bada bing. And so you get in line to exchange your money, and it takes a little while, but don't worry, because there's someone who walks down the line every few minutes telling you, your transaction is very important to us. And you finally get to the front, and what you find out is the exchange rate is just as exorbitant as the cost of this lamb. But resign, you exchange the money. Now can you imagine, now can you imagine why Jesus was so upset that we see him uncharacteristically furious, full of righteous indignation, so much so that he makes a whip out of cords and he causes this havoc, driving these unscrupulous people who are preying on the poor, those who have the least knowledge, the least options available to them, who are in a bind, why he drives them out of the temple, and why he protests the idolatry and the predation of these individuals. Brothers and sisters, you know, I read this gospel, and I can identify with it. You know, I, I find myself first identifying with Jesus and being angry at the predation of people who are helpless. And there are plenty of modern day parallels. I, when I taught economics, I used to teach, I had a lecture on the how expensive it is to be poor, how you're a poor person in a poor neighborhood, you have so few options. And so oftentimes services and groceries and other things are only available at high prices. I could be angry at those people. I could be outraged. If I wanted to look at times when religion and commerce were mixed to fleece the sheep, I could easily turn on a show on basic cable and look at the scamming televangelists, the scam evangelists, as I've heard them called. But then I remember something how spiritually dangerous it is to read the gospel and to point at others, to say, you people. Because our Lord tells us, don't ignore the log in your own eye to criticize the speck in your neighbor's eye. And I ask myself, what is this saying to me about me? And it's a hard question to ask. Now, this is very complex, and yet in my own meditation, I am drawn to the words and the concepts of a philosopher, Immanuel Kant, who has a concept called the categorical imperative. And one way of expressing it is that we are to treat other people not as ends to our own, but not as means to our own ends, but as ends in themselves. People are not means to an end, but they're ends in themselves. In other words, we are to look at people not as mere customers or servers or even marks. We are to look at them each as individual children of God, brothers and sisters for whom Christ has died. And we're supposed to treat them accordingly. And what does this mean? Well, again, we could go in so many directions but again, in my meditations, I was led to a quote attributed to the great rabbi, Abraham Joshua Heschel, who said, when I was young, I used to admire clever people. But now that I'm old, I admire kind people. Maybe it's oversimplifying, but maybe we can just begin with kindness. Maybe we can be begin by treating others with kindness. You know, it was a few decades ago, back when I went to fast food a lot more often, and you might remember when drive-throughs first started, if you were in line in the store, 
you could hear the orders being placed because it was on a speaker. This was before everyone had the headsets, right? And if you ever paid attention, and if you were in fast food places as much as I was, you could definitely hear how abusive so many people were to the poor people taking the order. They would ask for clarification because people didn't hear the speaker sounded. They would ask for clarification for an order, and they would get abused back. And mandated by the management, they do suggestive selling, like, would you like fries with that? And they'd get abuses hurled back at them. So I made a decision back then, and I, I tried to follow through. I do it very imperfectly, but I've seen something amazing from it. And I've said, you know, I'm gonna start treating these people really kindly. I'm gonna make a point of doing it. And so I say, please and thank you. And when I get to the window itself, if I see them, whether it's at the coffee shop or at a restaurant or whatever, I ask them how their day is going. And I ask it sincerely. And if they look weary, I'll tell them, I'll, I'll, I'll say to them, without trying to be condescending, you have a very tough job. And if they're young and you can tell, you know, this is maybe a first or second job, I'll say, you know, if you can do this job, you can do almost anything. And I don't know, you know, it's, this is, I tried to extend this to other places. And again, I'm terrible at it. I don't do it very well. But I've thought of this, and when I go to the scanner at the grocery store, I try to talk to the person that way. And sometimes I get some crusty bagger who's, you know, sour-faced and all. And I try to talk them up a little bit. And, and here's the point, you know, there's this thing in these drive through lines of paying it forward. You know, I'm gonna pay for mine and the person behind me. Now, I have to admit, I've never done this, but I've heard of this happening, and you hear of a wave of paying it forward, you know, where one person will pay for themselves and the person behind, and so that next person will pay for the person behind them, and sometimes it goes on for hours. Well, brothers and sisters, maybe simple acts of kindness like this can ripple the same way through our hearts and our souls because we live in hard times. We live in times where there's so much animosity and anger and it seems to be stoked by so many people for votes or ratings or whatever. And maybe we can start a counter movement of just beginning with kindness. We might not be able to get rid of the predation. We might not be able to protect everybody, but we can give what we have received. We have tasted the kindness of the Lord, and might we not pass that taste on to others? And who knows, but it will make a difference that will ripple and ripple and ripple through the economy and through the, through the whole society so that things are changed one part at a time. We have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. So all this we do through the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ. My prayer is that we will not be so overwrought with the predations of the world that we forget the things we can do which is to spread love and kindness in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Therefore, let us pray to the Lord, saying, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are most fully present, not in any building, but in your Son, Jesus. Give us the wisdom and strength to remove any obstacles that prevent your people from experiencing your presence. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Henry, our visiting bishop, and Dow and Michael, our priests. 
In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the province of the Anglican Church of the Congo. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the House of Bishops of the Episcopal Church. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, hear our prayer. Righteous God, your statutes are just and rejoice the heart. May your justice revive weary souls around the world. We long for the day when your perfect law is, more, is valued more than fine gold. We pray for our President Joseph, our Congress, and all world leaders. Give us a vision for peace. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, hear our prayer. Creator God, the heavens declare your glory. Train our eyes to hear and value the testimony of your handiwork. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, Hear our prayer. O Lord, you give wisdom to the innocent. We thank you for libraries and schools and other oases of learning. We thank you for those places where all people, rich and poor, young and old, can increase in knowledge of you and of all you have made. Please add your own petitions of thanksgiving. We give thanks for teachers. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your steadfast love extends to the thousandth generation of those who love you. We pray that you will defend us and all whom we love from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. This morning, we pray especially for Ronnie Brewer, Jr., Larry Brooks, Jimmy Brown, Maureen Finnan, Rachel Graham, Krista Joyce, Nadine Lomax, Julie Morgan, Randy Morgan, Sam Sheffer, George Tupper, Shelly K. Gunther, and all who are serving as caregivers for loved ones. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, hear our prayer. Ever-living God, you raised Jesus from the dead. We entrust the dead to the crucified one in the hope that those who have died in Christ will also be raised to a new life in him. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually, to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And 
sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this with the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. pray eternal god heavenly father you have graciously accepted us as living members of your son our savior jesus christ and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you 
with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.